Hi, I'm Fred McNeil, and you're watching QAC TV7, and the name of the show is Papa's World. Now, we've left the studio finally, and now we're down on Ken Island in Stevensville. It's 97 degrees, and it feels like about 103, but it's all right. I've got two of the coolest characters on Ken Island. <laughs> They've got more stories, probably a lot of lies, too, but more stories than any I know, anyone I know. Nick, thank you for being with us today. Thank and you. by the way, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. 84th today? 28th. 28th, okay, something like that. Now, Nick, introduce me to your good friend. Who's this man next to me? That's my good friend, Billy Denny. We've been friends for somewhere around 80 years and uh, went to school together, dated together, went to proms, played played ball together. So there's so, a lot of stories oh, there. A lot of stories we can't tell you. Yeah. Okay, Bill, thanks for being with us today. Oh, good to be here. And many thanks for your front porch. You certainly will. If we were filming outside, I think the show would be about three minutes. <laughs> right. Okay, outside in the sun. Nick, Nick, how about help us out? We're sitting here, right here on a front porch in old Stevensville. All right, mm -hmm. now, tell me how this has changed since you and Bill grew up. Oh, my Lord. All right, just get started anyway. Well, everything has changed. When we were here growing up, the population in Stevensville was 300 people. 300, okay. 300. I understand today it's around 30,000 on Kent Island. I don't know. Um, but it was, a, it was a much peaceful time. It was before the Second World War started. Uh, so we're talking 30s and 40s or even 30s and 40s. Okay. It was during the Great Depression. Okay. And uh, everybody, as Billy has often said, uh, we were all poor, but we did, we were all so poor, but we didn't know it because all, <clears throat> all our neighbors Everybody were poor. Everybody was poor, right? Yeah. So okay. we, but we raised our own chickens, raised our own hogs. They, they slaughtered them every, every um, like October. They would, and that what carries you through the, uh, the winter months. And you had your own gardens. And at that time, they would come around and sell fish. Uh, they would clean them uh, four for a quarter. And my mother would go out in the garden and get radishes and tomatoes and lettuce, and we'd have that that night for dinner. And, and we thought it was a, a feast. It was a gourmet meal. Oh, it was wonderful, wonderful, yeah. Better than Now, Bill, let's start out with it. When is your first run to Nick? Now, I know when you, I you weren't robbing Nick. post offices or anything, were you now? <laughs> no, I, I, my name hadn't gone up in the post office yet. <laughs> but uh, Nick, I knew him from going to school together. Nicky and I and another guy by the name of Donnie Crouch, we started first grade practically together. And this is not early and, or mid-1930s? Let me get my years. I would of, say at 38. 38. 37, 38. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went, Donna, we went to school together. I had my bike, uh, my brand new bike. Donnie had his, Nicky had a bike. And we all went to school together. And I remember taking my bike and parking it down in front of the school, the one you were just in front right. of, and walking on up to the school. And I had my new book bag and my new little notebook and everything. And I was scared to death because a lot of those kids going to that school were from Chester and Graysonville. That seemed so, like far, and, far away. Yeah, right? they were yeah. like from another country okay. almost, okay. you know, <laughs> off of Ken Island going over the nearest bridge. So I met a lot of new people, and I did know the school teachers. In fact, when I bought this home I'm in now, Mrs. White, and she was a price before that, she lived next door to me. This was the, the school teacher? The, the school teacher okay. that I went first and second grade to. And uh, would you like a little story about Sure, go ahead. Well, when we when I was in the first grade, of course, I was learning. And you and Nick are in, in class together? Yeah. Nick, yeah, anyway. <laughs> We had learning the different A, B, C, D, the alphabet, and so forth. Then uh, the second grade, we went on up, and you'd put two letters together. So she would be A, B, Abba, Abba, and then B would be B, B, and C. <laughs> and then they got to C, H. And when you said C, H, I always said Ch, Ch. So Mrs. White was, we had these little chairs we were sitting in. And Mrs. White would say, Bill, say C-H. I said, ch, ch, and the whole class laughed. So we went on through the alphabet, and every time they said the next combination of letters, I was still hung up on C-H. <laughs> and I'd go, ch, ch, and the whole class would laugh. And finally, Mrs. White said, Bill, we're on a later letter. I want you to not say C-H anymore, but say whatever the next combination was. Well, Billy, um, yeah, I'm on her anyway. Billy said when she got to the next set of letters, I said, ch, ch, 
and the whole class was down there. <laughs> so I almost got put out of class about the third day in the second grade. The ch -ch -ch -ch. Everybody loved that chit ch chit, so I used it all the time, you know. And driving this poor lady crazy. And Mrs. White never forgot it. So when I moved around here, my home in 53, she's next door. But she's the sweetest lady in the world. So she actually didn't say, oh, my, not Bill Danny moving next door to me. She came over and welcomed me into the home and so forth and so on. So through the rest of her life, we lived next door, and she had us over every Christmas and so forth for cake and so forth. And uh, really, I learned to love the lady a wonderful rather lady. than tease her. <laughs> okay, no ch ch anymore. No more ch ch. <laughs> now, what? What? Give me this. 1938. That set the scene here a little bit before World War II. Oh yeah. FDR's well, president. So yes. tell us a little bit. What's? Who, remember who the governor was, by any chance? 1938. I believe it was uh, Nice because nice. we, we built a ferry and named it the Harry W. Nice. Okay. Um, and remember this. You probably don't know it, but in uh, probably 1940, President Roosevelt stopped here in Stevensville, Genevieve Long was the postmistress, mm -hmm. and she was a staunch Democrat. And in those days, whoever was president, that, that's who the... He appointed the postmaster, oh, oh, correct? Yeah, yes, yeah, right, right. Yeah. And uh, we, I have pictures in my book of, of him there. Yeah. Uh, he, in fact, he stopped right in front of the um, Dr. Norris's drugstore, and that was right next to the post office. Okay. And. Uh, I, I wasn't there, but people have given me pictures of that. Of FDR, yeah. right here yeah, in Stevens. FDR, Steve's. yep. They would have taken a boat across, a ferry? or took the get... ferry across. Okay. And in one of my other stories, uh, they talked about him uh, taking the ferry back to Washington. But the main thing was, he didn't have Secret Service. The Postmaster General Farley was with him and one trooper. One that was trooper. it? That was it, yeah. No. But it was different. Listen, yeah. it Times was so were different. different. Times. In the mornings, we'd get up and our parents would say, you're going to have a big breakfast. Well, my mother, my dad always had country ham, eggs, buckwheat. He wouldn't have pancakes, he had buckwheat. And mom would say, okay, see you at 5 o'clock for dinner. Get out. That was it. Get that out and play. Right? Mm -hmm. No so video we, games or anything, no, right? No. <laughs> oh, video. We didn't we have TV. We knew what a telephone we'd was. We'd get together and we'd get our skates, and we would skate from here to Love Point, to the ferry. Mm. And then we'd swim. Most of the day. Mm -hmm. Old roller skates with like the key to yeah. tighten and, and listen, and this was and all cement. Okay. And it was so bad that they had filled it with tar. And if you struck one of those tar puddles, you, you stayed. Stuck. You stayed. <laughs> you got stuck. They had to come back and pull you out. Yeah. <laughs> but then we'd go to Mattapique. And the Mattapique was a wonderful place. We'd all take our bikes. We'd come over here to Franham's or one of the stores and get a package of hot dogs and some rolls. And we'd go down there to Mattapique. And uh, Tommy Ewan had to stand. That's where we bought our cokes and ice cream if we wanted. We'd spend the whole day on the beach. The whole Just day. Just having a good time. And when we come home, Billy might say, uh, come on around the house. Mom's fixing dinner. We'll have dinner together. So I'd have to go to my mother. No phones. Have to run to mother. And say, Mom, I'm going to have dinner with Billy. Okay, have a good time. Wasn't worried about you. No, wasn't worried. And I, I've said before, during World War II, we would walk out, be up here at nighttime, we'd skate, because there was no traffic. The only traffic was coming from, from the Love Point Ferry, and after night, you didn't see much of that. But you could, you could go out here during the war, and Gabriel Heater was the big announcer for the war. Okay. And you walk up this street, or roller skate, roller skate up this street, and you never missed a beat. Every house had him on. Everyone and he, listening to the war. Everybody, the and he too. always started out with either Ah, oh, yes, there's sad news tonight. Or maybe, ah, oh, yes, there's good news tonight. Our boys have taken such and such. So know. it was an update on what was update, going on. But you never missed a beat from here. Everybody right, listened to it. Up to the railroad station, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bill, how about some of your early memories? Now, growing up, uh, 30s, I mean, well, small to roller skating in the middle of the street. Yeah, I guess the biggest thing I remember was getting my new pair of roller skates. Okay. And they actually had ball bearings. In now, them. these were old metal skates. Yeah, they all metal. They didn't have like a shoe on. It was just no, a piece no, of metal, no. right? Yeah. We had a clamp that went. Right. And, and it, it slid up and down. Yeah. Heel, and then the front hooked together with a little screw. And it, your sole had to come off your shoe before you lose that skate <laughs> and a strap around it. So it really held very good. And of course, my dad had the garage around town here, W.E. Denny and Son. So he would really put that skate on me, and when I got ready to take it off, I had to go to him to get it off. He had that so super tight. grip to get it yeah, off. Yeah, on my land, yeah. But I remember we would skate from Stevensville all the way to Love Point, which is about four miles, 
Just and right down the middle of the road? Right down the middle of the road. No cars. The only thing we had to worry about was where they hooked the cement together was a big tar place and you had to watch your skate would hit it. Oh, you'd sink in the tar? Yeah, and you, you could actually <laughs> sink into the tar like mud, you know. Okay. But we rolled all the way to uh, Love Point and back and I wouldn't even be tarred out. If I have to walk across a yard now, I'm tired. You get a little worn out like I did. I mean, uh, Nick helped. Did yeah. wonderful things, you know. They were yeah. healthy, you know. Well, that's what I'm going to ask each of you. Now we, I think of children, and everything is organized. There's organized little league. There's organized this. There's organized that. Now, when you guys were growing up, it was kind of like, hey, we kind of did our own thing. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. Had, we, we played ball together. We didn't have a coach. We okay. just, well, just went was, to a field yeah, and got yeah. a ball in a bag. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Soccer, was, same way. Was there any little leagues at all? Or? Oh, no. No, no. No. Not around here, anyway. It was all neighborhood yeah. sports. Yep. All neighborhood, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, tell, me a bit, tell me about schools now. Well, I Where want to we tell go? you about our oh, ball good. players. Oh, tell us first, about that, sure. Don't mind. I tell whatever you they want. had they had girls in, on our team. Each one of two And these are just pickup teams. Yeah, yeah. We, we'd get together with all the kids in Where would Stevensville. You play? We'd play out here in a field okay. and had to knock down the weeds and all, and then get a brick and make first, second, third okay. base and home. Anyway, the girls were better players than and us boys. boys, and half the time when I chose. For some eye on my You'd team, pick a girl? I'd pick a couple girls. They, they could throw and catch and bat, yeah. And they were prettier too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> real reason. How about sport? I mean, so you were kind of like it was a different world, wasn't it? It was oh, yeah. children on their own in yeah. terms of we found our own activities. What they did. As we said, it's a, it was a different time, and you didn't have to fear for anything. And okay. you, you know, your parents weren't afraid if you if you if you said Billy want to go skating, like yeah, we'll go skating, and nine o'clock they wanted you in. But today, you, you wouldn't dare think yeah. about anything like that. Nick, how about, and I'll ask you both, how about teenagers? Now, what did you do as you got a little bit older? Let's say you're in, now you went to high school at we Stevensville high, high School, yeah. which Stevens is where now? It's, it's long gone. Okay, oh, it's gone the same. Yeah. Okay. They, uh, they, they built us another school in place of it. And, and this is something, and you're talking about it, the school. Um, I, I went by one day, and they had taken a, Johnny, Johnny Cole had got the contract. They took a great big ball. And Tommy Pauls was on the crane, and he knocked that school. And this is the old Stevensville the High School. Old Steve, it had served for the community hall. It had served for everything. Um, they built it in 1930, and they tore it down in 1964, I believe. Now, it. Nick, is this where Stevensville Middle School is now? Let me, for some of us that aren't sure. Uh, across, yeah. Where the elementary school is now? No, it's across. Oh. The, it, it's where the old, yeah. It's, it's hard to repair it right now. Yeah. Oh, okay, where yeah. Stevensville yeah. Middle School is. School. That was yeah. the old high school. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. exactly. So, so what is it? Okay. So tell me what what did uh, rough and tough guys like you did? Uh, so you're in the high school, I guess, in the 40s. Oh, yeah. What was what was the entertainment? You, you had your own entertainment. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What can we talk about on here? <laughs> what can we talk about on here, Bill? Well, actually, we would. We Nikki and I love to play ball. So after school, we'd come back down to high school and played on that ground there, okay. playing uh, softball or soccer. We Just loved pick up soccer. Games. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and we'd get our own team to choose up, and we'd learn from the older boys how to do certain things. Bill, were there a high school team? I mean, did the, did the high school have a soccer team? The they best? had a team that got together. <laughs> uh, when I was in the eighth grade, I made the senior team. So, okay. that, you know, they were picking up. Anybody they could get. Yeah. Here's a little squirt here's a, here's like a warm body. on the scene. <laughs> okay. And I learned how to play ball pretty good in elementary school. So when I got in high school, I was pretty good. But I felt like that the other boys were bigger than I was and older, and they should know more. But uh, we didn't have enough for a team. So, so you made the Billy, play. you can make the team. You know. Okay. Now who'd you play? Did you play like Centerville? Uh, we or would play Centerville, Sutterville, Church Hill. Even St. Michael's, we played them. And that was a pretty big trip in those days. Yeah, right? a long okay. trip. Okay. We rode with the principal. He rode in a Chrysler he bought from my dad. He was Chrysler Plymouth dealer. And uh, Nicky said I was sitting on, uh, he was sitting on the front, but I remember sitting on the front. Okay. He's sitting in the back seat. And J. Fred Stevens, who's the principal, got us and going to take us to the game. And he was going down the road, and here comes a truck up the road. And I'm sitting on the front seat, and I said, I wonder if Jay Fred's going to make a left around this car and get in before this other car meets us. And he did, 
But let me tell you one thing, he almost scared me to death. <laughs> I don't know about Nicky and Johnny or whoever was in the back seat, but uh, I warmed up long before I got to the game on that little end. You scared to death of yeah. <laughs> it. This was yeah. a nice little community. At, at nighttime, all the farmers came in to the American store to Franums. Or to now, help us out. This is what we now call old Stevensville, right? About, yeah. uh, about 400 yeah. yards from where yeah. we are now. Right okay. down here, yeah. Well, describe that scene. This is oh, the. Oh, yeah. well, and, and during the, during the uh, high school days, I was 16 years old. Well, 15, I didn't have my license. And uh, they let me work in the uh, American store. And. Uh, and I used to say, I hate to see a farmer come in because he'd come in and say, I want 100 pounds of sugar and 100 pounds of flour. And you had to load it. And Mr. Colpack would say, Nicky, <laughs> we'll get that and bring it out there. <laughs> okay. And then, then the big truck would come in and uh, we had to wear aprons, white aprons and, and shirts and ties. In, in those days, While you're working oh, in the yeah, store? Okay. Yeah. And he'd say, uh, Blackjack's here. You gotta unload the truck. I said, "Oh my!" So Lord. in a coat, in a tie, and yep. an apron, you're unloading and, and, this and truck. And so then he would say, so "When you get done, you go home and change your clothes. Take a shower if you want." And of course, everybody didn't have showers. No, no. But I want, I want to tell you Please. something. Back in those days, things were just, just so cheap. Here, here's the old Dutch mill, which is long gone. It's down now, by the, tell us by what the, the old high school. Okay, okay. A steak dinner cost you fifty cents. Now that was steak and potatoes. <laughs> steak, or? potatoes, whatever you wanted 50 for cents. fifty cents. And then steak and onions was 55 cents. They charge you five, five cents, cents for, for an for onion. onion. Yeah. <laughs> and then they had hamburger steak was 45. But I remember, and Billy can remember, we used to go there for lunch. <coughs> we, we didn't have cafeteria in school. <coughs> oh, so you, you would leave school and go across and eat? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And then the White House restaurant went after that. Okay. But anyway, the hamburgers, I'm not kidding mm. you, they, they hung over the, um, the bread. And he didn't have rolls, just had that. And you had a hamburger cost you 20 cents. <coughs> And a Coke would cost you a nickel. So 25 cents, you get a hamburger 20, and a Coke. Yeah. And we'd go out at nighttime, and he and I would go, we'd take our girls, and we'd go to Centerville, and we'd pick up our girls. We had a couple of girls up there. Went all the way to Centerville. Oh, You're yeah. stepping out here. You're yeah. stepping out. We wanted to. Make okay, impressive. Yeah, yeah. So we, we would go there, and we would go to um, the movie. That cost 20 cents. He's, to see a movie, yeah. 20 cents. So we'd go back to Peggy's Diner. And everybody, Cat where Island, was Peggy's Graysonville, Diner? Okay. Centerville, they all met at Peggy's Diner. Where was that? Where was that? Located? Peggy's is in Graysonville today. It's it's an apartment house. Okay. It's, it's not much. Right to downtown, Grayson. Yeah, okay. right downtown. And um, we go in, and if normally you would take your girlfriend, and you have a cheeseburger, and uh, and when the cheeseburger wasn't put on 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 a roll, it was on toast. Okay. What do we call? I can't think what we call it today. But anyway, that's what it was, and it was. Um, 20 cents, got a cook, it was a nickel. And boy, if you wanted to impress your date, you got a hot roast beef oh, Lord. with french fries. That must have cost 50 cents. 35 cents. 35. 35 he broke the cents. bank. Big spender. Yep, yep. And a milkshake was 15 cents. And, we just, and, and down here in the store, for example, of course, Billy's uh, father sold ice cream, too. And Mr. Clark had a store here. And every once in a while, he had a big sale. And you get an ice cream cone. He had a double dip. It was a nickel. A nickel for a an nickel. ice cream cone. Yeah, it had a double dip cone. It was made with two things on it for the ice cream. Yeah. And he charged you a nickel. Charge you a nickel. And then every once in a while, he would have a special. You get three dips for a nickel. Oh, man. You can't handle three candy dips. Candy bars. And his father sold them to three for 10 cents. Mm, three candy three bars. Candy. Now you're they lucky to get them a dollar. Before, so we go in there and hot weather and get them. Yeah, oh, can't beat that. Bill, help me out now. With this, we're on your front porch. Mm -hmm. If I turn to my left is what I call old... That would be the center of Stevensville. Yeah, describe what would I have seen in the 30s and the 40s? Well, the, stores and stuff. Uh, the thing I really remember a lot was everybody, the farms were all around here, and everybody came to town on Saturday night. Now, this is uh, late 30s, early 40s. That would 40s. be, let's see, I would be about, uh, I was about six, eight years old, okay. so that would be the late 30s, early 40s. Okay, so everybody came into downtown area. And there would be area. cars parked up and down the street, and if you were riding a bicycle, you just barely could get through them all because all the farmers were coming in and they would help their wives load the car and so forth. And what was the attraction? I mean, this is grocery shopping? The, the big tra attraction was what happened over the week. Oh, so gossip, all the gossip. old farm, the guys would get together and tell all these stories, and they'd be down here to the drugstore, and I'm not too sure that they didn't have a little something to drink down there. <laughs> okay, they got something got besides together. cough syrup. Because a lot of them would be in front, and then there'd be another <laughs> lot of them behind the drugstore. Okay, store. now, where would the drugstore be from where we're looking? Right, right it downtown? It would be down here, 
uh, the house you can see now. By the, rest of, by the restaurant? On the left, okay. and then you see the metal roof, and okay. that's where the dance school is. Okay. Mrs. DeShields, Mrs. DeShields Dance School yeah, now. Ballerina. Okay. And that's where the drugstore was. So you have the farmers all sh getting gossip. All the wives the are buying groceries. Are where would and you shop? They would shop down here at the store. There was a store there alongside uh, the dance studio, which was on the left, and that was run by Dawkins. Then they had Franham's IGA store, which would be below the so bank. Two grocery stores. It had three. Oh, three. And then they had uh, one that Nikki worked at, and that would be uh, where the Cocky Lane is. That would be on the other side of it. So it was. I remember three stores there, and then I remember a material store where they came in and bought yards of uh, different things to make Kelly. dresses. So that, they can make dresses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a big deal there. But the biggest deal was being able to ride our bikes up and down this road. Without and any between, fear of anything? And nobody got hurt, nobody ran over you. The cars would only go about 15 to 20 miles okay. an hour, you know. So you could outride them were, a lot. Yeah, we passed them on our bikes. <laughs> but the big thing was just being out, no worry about anyone hurting you, and we could do just about anything it was a we different like world, to do. Wasn't it? Different it was world. a different world. And we, we were actually respected the people. Uh, except Halloween, we used to get a bar of <laughs> ivory soap and soap all the cars up. And, and have was, a little bit of fun. Yeah, and we almost got caught two or three times, but <laughs> okay. the guys couldn't run as fast as we could, the older <laughs> fellas, so we'd get away with it. But it was just a carefree time. Uh, and Bill, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Nick, close-knit in terms of everybody knew. Billy just said how everybody respected everybody. Oh, yeah. I mean, every, it was. A, I remember growing up, if I messed up, there were four neighbors would be on the phone to my mother at night. And it was that type of environment. If I, if I got a whip in the school, I got one I got home. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I wanted to say, Please. Billy's talking about, about yeah. uh, a Norris's drugstore. And when I was six, seven years old, Mom used to send me out to the post office to get the mail. I mean, and this is, right, again, about 400 yards from right where we Right next to the uh, drugstore. Okay. And uh, Dr. Norris had the <laughs> drugstore. And he had some of the first coats we saw, you know. Okay. And, he and this had, was a treat. Oh yeah, okay. and then he had in, in the uh, in the store. I don't even remember the coat. But he had coat tables, and they were like wire, but they had wood around them. And there's still some around today. Every once in a while, you, you see one in a in an antique yeah, store. Yeah. And um, people would go in there and have lunch. And I would just think, well, they must be rich. And I sat down there and have lunch. But then he had uh, uh, ice cream. And he just and it was what well, is the drugstore? It he was would, an old yeah. counter. Uh, yeah. Where people would have a yeah. lunch and and you had you. We had three doctors. Well, at one time, we had about four or five doctors, but Dr. Sadamar, Dr. Uh, Snyder, and Dr. Henry were really in our days. Now, Dr. Kemp was before that, and... And, uh, and they all lived here in oh, yeah. Stevensville? Yeah, yeah. But I gotta ask, I'll, ask you, I'll start with Bill and I'll come back. What happened? I mean, is it the war or the bridge? I mean, Stevensville well, now, you know, I've been here. What happened with yeah. the doctors? Or well, no, the, what, ha the well, what happened? Well, the people in what terms happened? of well, all the services, three well, grocery stores? Uh, David M. Nichols came here, and he where was a uh, Maryland Highway Administration, one of the people on the board. And he saw when he came over here riding the Manapeak Ferries that this place here is really going to boom. So uh, he came in here and bought farms, cut them into maybe acre lots, and then when the bridge went up, particularly the bridge, they came over here and got to the eastern shore. They didn't want to go home. Oh, so they Shang sold the ho yeah. homes on the western yeah, shore right. and came over here and stayed. Okay. He thought they'd just come over here for a weekend or something, but they got on the eastern shore and saw how nice it was and Why all the back? beaches. And they oh, won't stay right. over here. Yeah. And that's where all these people came from. Before that, it was all farms and everything, but it's really changed. Okay. I want to say one thing. Yeah, Bill, we're going to wrap this up. Now, guys, I'm going to be asking you before we wrap this up. Can we do this again? Oh, we'll yeah. schedule oh, part. This is just the beginning, yeah. all right? We'll do this on a regular basis. Right, use this house, oh, well, he's, he if we use this one. porch, we'll stay here all year. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, not, <laughs> good, you wanted to say yeah. something. In 1917, the United States War Department tried to take this island to make it a Ken Island, a yes. testing area oh, yeah. or something. Yeah. And here's a picture I have here, and all these people went over to Washington and fought. They wanted, they wanted to make this a base. Proving Billy, ground. Proving ground. You remember? Like Aberdeen or something like yes. that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. They went there and they fought it, and the old hard Ken Islanders, they won. Good for them. But they did again back in the 50s, remember Billy? And they tried yeah, to make this an air base. 
They tried to take this over. Ken Island is an Ken Island. Island, yes, sir. And, and I'm telling you, bombs out here. I thought, really? I thought it would be World War III. I mean, <laughs> it, it went to the far. That's where the meeting was, and some were for it and some against it. And boy, I said they're going to come to blows. They're going to be excited. Oh yeah. Well, guys, why don't we do this? Look at. First of all, thanks a million, Bill. Oh, okay, and Nick, as usual, it's just wonderful. How about can we make each other a promise? Let's do a couple shows like this, all right? Because we're just we're just scratching the surface, right? We're only still in the 30s and 40s, because mm -hmm. I think people as they moved here are amazed at the, what a wonderful community you still have. Mm -hmm. But the old days of everybody knowing each other, kids being safe on the streets and stuff like that. Can we do it again? Sure, anytime. Okay, let's do it. Like to. And Nick, before I say goodbye to you, hey, happy birthday, Thank okay? You. And remember I remember Dixie. You got. I want Dixie to know in San Diego the show will be on TV soon. Look at I'm Fred McNeil. We're on a very hot day on Ken Island. And let me tell you what. We're going to continue with this series with Nick and Bill because we've got a million stories to tell. I'm Fred McNeil. You've been watching QAC TV7 and Papa's World. And I want to thank my camera crew. They're out here in 97 degree heat. And Mike Francis is sitting in the sun filming. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time.